Hi, welcome to Sewing Bee Unraveled with me, Jane, from Habit I Should Do. It is the semi-final week. Week nine, I think? Or oh, was it week eight? I can't remember. I've lost count now. Um, so we had uh, Manny, Deborah, Brogan and Annie uh, in the semi-final. And it's Japan week. Uh, for the pattern challenge, they had to make a kimono. And in the transformation, they had to undertake some visible mending, uh, known as sashiko, or shashiko, sashiko, I think, sorry. And and then in the uh, made to measure, it was an origami inspired, inspired outfit. So uh, the kimono was a pattern that was drafted by Esme and um, a Japanese colleague of hers. So I haven't been able to find anything like it. Um, the, the features of the kimono was the re rectangular sleeve and it was put in a, in a, a not the conventional way. I think it has a, a, a gap in it. Um, it has a standaway collar and um, a trim down the front, which is often in a contrast colour. And then a big tie belt um, uh, tied with a bow. And then it was lined as well and the lining is attached. So if you, you, if you get the lining too short, it's going to pucker up everything um, from the front. So um, Deborah and Brogan had a bit of a mare on this one. Uh, Deborah's uh, put the sleeve in completely incorrectly and then Brogan's lining was too short. So they were um, third and fourth and then Manny and Annie did pretty well. Annie's was a green and red geometric pattern um, and Manny's was um, like a red floral. So not traditionally Japanese looking but um, pattern wise I found a few kind of Japanese inspired outfits so uh, this jacket um, 7790 these call, all come in up to size extra large or size 24 I think I think it goes up to um, that's got the contrast um, collar and belt and trim around the bottom <clears throat> this one too you could do it in a sort of a patchwork version or uh, just in one colour, 7132. Uh, this is one of our indie designers, so different. These are lovely patterns to use. I've made a few things from here. Um, this is a longer length jacket. It's got short sleeves, but you could lengthen the sleeves, but they're all one piece. You can see there's no uh, there's no seam to set those sleeves in. Uh, and this is a shorter version of it, but it's got um, sort of in the seam pockets. Um, that's that little green jacket. I don't know if you see me wearing that. Um, that's a shorter style jacket, but it's got the Revere type collar. And then slightly off piece, but sort of Japanese inspired. We've got 8029. And then this is one that we've done in our boot place, 7262. Uh, so fabric wise, um, I think most people plump for a cotton. Um, so you could go for sort of quite a traditional cotton. This is a William Morris print, the Strawberry Thief. Strawberry thief. Um, that would pair nicely with this willow pattern in green. You could do either of those as a contrast. Um, you could go super bright. We've got koi carp or some kind of koi carp. I'm sure any fishing experts will tell me what kind of koi that is. Um, you could pair that with um, a vibrant polka dot. Um, or you could go more floaty. And um, this is a viscous, this is fairly new in. Um, I think this would make a lovely little summery jacket uh, just to put over a, a camisole top or something for to keep the chill off in the, in the evenings. Okay, so going into the transformation challenge uh, where they had to do some sashiko or visible mending um, it's kind of like a form of darning but you're designed to see it we have got a couple of books on it that cover it uh, so mending matters and um, that's a really lovely book actually if you're into stitching it's got lots of different ideas of how to do how to mend holes in, in garments patch pockets all that kind of thing and then this one always makes me laugh that title joyful mending because that's a bit of an oxymoron really i always find mending a bit of a chore but that too has got some lovely ideas so 
Um, you can use all kinds of things for mending. I mean, we've got loads and loads of um, motif patches. So you can iron on or sew these on. Uh, there's lots more there as well. This is just a very small sample. Um, you can use embroidery threads. These are just over a pound each. Um, there's over 450 colours of those, so lots to choose from. You could go a bit thicker and use a tapestry wall. Again, there's over 400 uh, colours and they're just over a pound each. did a lovely little uh, rainbow, um, embroidered rainbow between two clouds on her skirt. Um, uh, Annie had embroidered stars. Uh, and then Brogan and Deborah again both had a bit of a mare. Uh, Deborah came last again. Uh, she, I don't think she she just kind of appliqued stuff on. She didn't um, really do the sort of visible mending bit, the the, the threading. Um, and then finally, the made to measure was um, an origami inspired gown. They had five and a half hours to make this, and they'd already had. Um, an hour and a half to cut out so they had a bit of prep time on this and they wanted the appearance of folded paper around the body and to create 3d shapes um, so really you needed a fabric that was going to fold and hold its shape so cotton drill which is what deborah used taffeta which is what annie used um i'd written down scuba as well which is kind of the similar kind of stuff to what uh, brogan had used but like they didn't like the fact that it didn't actually crease although it does hold its shape if you put it into a a position it will hold its shape so um annie again did a fantastic job um she really hit the brief on this one making her bright pink taffeta gown uh, with all the geometric shapes um uh, deborah's cotton drill mount fuji inspired outfit was the white um, with the big um shaped sleeves um and then the blossom around the hem i thought that was really clever uh, then um, Manny's disappearing collar um, but that was about the only bit of um, origami in it so it was very subtle um, and then she had a big applique crane on the front which did have bits that stuck out but it looked more applique than um, origami and then Brogan with her uh, neoprene sort of wetsuit fabric it was a bit like scuba um, and she, she got some really interesting shapes um, and the, the flowers that she made and the and the frill across the middle but um, I don't think they thought that she really hit the brief with that one uh, so it was um, it did look like either Deborah or Brogan was going to be going home and not going to make the final which would have been a real shame so uh, it was really good to see that they were all going to stay <laughs> uh, so I hope that's not a spoiler for anybody probably if you're watching this then uh, you already know the outcome don't you so uh, so final next week uh, I think I shall be raising a glass or, or two when I watch it so have a good week and um, let's hope the sun shines see you then, bye